This talk is based on um, a project looking at um, archaeology websites from um, projects that uh, do archaeology in Virginia. It was uh, coming from a, a survey that was a collections uh, repository survey of institutions that had archaeological collections that was done. And I was looking at the websites of those institutions. So the, the big framework was looking at aspects of open data, scholarly publishing, and then public outreach. And obviously, for this three-minute session, I'm going to concentrate on the public outreach part of it. But I actually think the data part is interesting as well, connecting back to that kind of open science thing and where, and also the audience thing. I mean, we're not talking about one audience for archaeology. We know that we're talking about multiple audiences. We're not talking about two archaeologists in the public. There's many, many, I mean, 27, I think, different types of audience. So where the role of data fits into that and where the role of some of these other things fit into that. So these are the sites I identified that had um, archaeology. The, um, the ones on the left, the longer list, actually have what was defined as archaeological data. The ones on the right <coughs> had archaeology, though no data. And I'll say that there was a total of 150 institutions in Virginia um, that were identified as having, you know, archaeological component. 74% um, of those had no archaeology on their website. So we've already got a list of, you know, 26% of institutions out of that total that have archaeology at all. Um, that's that breakdown of that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about those, those no data and data sites that do at least have archaeology. I think the bigger question here is, is how archaeologists are defining themselves and how archaeology is getting defined by other people. And I'm not sure, you know, looking at the survey, admittedly a limited sample, that archaeology is necessarily doing a very good job of defining itself through this realm, at least, of, of websites. Um, so what fields do I look at on these websites to identify components of public outreach? Um, we know there's aspects, social media, this kind of Web 2.0 idea of um, multivocality, it reflects um, democratization of knowledge, um, context and use of, of rich media, um, community involvement and outreach, and educational modules. So um, those were the actual fields I tracked. As, again, this is part of a, a much bigger survey of fields looking at all of these websites. Um, did the website have summary reports, contact information, which you think would be a given, um, blog, <coughs> social media, contextual information, um, other media, uh, outreach and educational mo modules. And obviously in the survey, these terms are you know, a, bit more, a bit more clearly defined. Um, so there, I'm at the beginning stage of actually doing the analysis of this. So this is kind of broad. Um, we're very early on there. Um, but very quickly, contextual is actually good. Um, all the sites that have, not all, but 80, almost 80% 80 of the sites that have archaeology um, within the terms of the survey did a good job of providing contextual information, which, you know, being archaeologists, yay, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. You expect that to be a strong point. But there was very little else that you could see as a clear template for public engagement through the websites. Um, the other ones, um, outreach was, was relatively strong at 58%. There's a lot of tie in there with um, field schools and things, so that's part of the reason for that. Um, just over half of the sites provided summary information on the sites related, the archaeological sites. And that's not a huge number. And everything else then is, is dropping below 50%. Um, um, the uh, contact information doesn't seem to have made it on there, but that was also a, a lower one as well. That was, maybe that was tied up to the, the data field to allow people to go through a bit further. Um, just in conclusion, then, I think this does raise some interesting questions. As I say, my broader survey is also interested in this idea of archaeological <coughs> data and where the place for that is. Um, I personally think that the difference between archaeology and pot hunting is the data, and whether the archaeology actually needs to whether the public and publics, clearly, um, always need to get to that data. I think it's important that they need to know it's there. Um, and then there are all these other issues of who owns the data, authority, trust, provenience of the data, both in an archaeological sense and how the data got to be where it is. And then these um, citizen science things and open data questions of what knowledge do you need to use the data, um, digital literacy, and then kind of the, the kind of discipline metadata that you need to actually make sense of some of this archaeological information. So it's an ongoing thing. I'm hoping to get this finished, many willing, in May. Thank you.